Before watching, check the description. There's a Bybit registration link there. It's my top exchange, best volume, liquidity, and lowest fees. You'll save hundreds monthly just from this. Why use my referral link? You'll get a $10, $30,000 sign-up bonus based on your deposit. Most of my followers get $100, no deposit. You'll still get $10 minimum. Big traders can earn up to $30,000 with required trading volume. Click here to see your potential bonus. Links below. Enjoy the video. In the last review, I discussed Bitcoin's growth potential and reasons. But you know there's no reason for Bitcoin to skyrocket right now. It's still flat in this channel, possibly heading to the lower edge. Even small movements trigger selling, especially from the 50-day average. It's being sold off, can't hold above it, not even near the channel's top. Here's Bitcoin on the daily chart. So what? This is the current situation. Take a look at this graph. It's basically the alt index. I mentioned it before saying the bottom was here. I was wrong. What can I say about this chart now? The bottom's breakout, which took months to form, is technically a good rounding. But this breach suggests it'll be a while before the next bottom forms. If this bottom took months to form, it'll likely take at least a few more months for a new bottom to establish at a different level. I've drawn a channel we're moving in, but there's no sign of a bottom buyout, bullish absorption or level consolidation. We're not seeing growth towards the channel's upper boundary. At most, there's some bullish action at the bottom until the channel's upper edge drops to new levels. So what does this mean? It means altcoins likely won't rise with Bitcoin even if Bitcoin starts climbing now. If Bitcoin drops to the channel's lower bullish flag, alts will plummet. I've got coins ready for short trades, possibly very soon. Most likely in the near future, even faster than Bitcoin, it will go down somewhere here. And there are a number of altcoins that will drop and I'll show you why and at what levels to short them. Speaking of this chart, I'm showing you its ticker. You can copy and paste it into your trading platform to track it. This is the ratio of the market cap of all altcoins excluding USDT to the market cap of Bitcoin. Currently, the chart shows a value of 0.62, meaning the total market cap of all altcoins is 0.62 times that of Bitcoin. So, if this ratio suddenly grows to 1, it means the market cap of all altcoins equals that of Bitcoin. You get it, right? When this chart rises, it means altcoins are growing. When it falls, altcoins are falling. And I think it will take a long time for the bottom to form here. Some coins are still holding up, though even Ether is in a downtrend from its double top. Other coins are staying high without clear downward patterns. I've marked some weak coins with flags. Let's start with the yellow flags. These coins are near and approaching support levels. For example, here's our support level. It dipped below twice but bounced back on volume. Big wicks formed, but price keeps pressing up to this level. Moving averages are falling, as you can see. Price was sold off when it approached them. And here's Dash. The market seems okay now, but yesterday saw a bearish engulfing at the 50MA. 
a negative signal pointing to a drop to support. Well, for the third or fourth time, if the price reaches here, it'll likely hold. The closer we get to the level, the higher the chance of a breakout, you know? Let's say there were no breakouts, just the price bouncing off it. By the fourth approach, the odds of breaking through are higher. If we're talking about previous breakouts and false ones, these were more like flash crashes with stops getting triggered at this level. Then these flash crashes were bought up as the market is strong. Now let's consider this range of buyer interest. Those interested in this range bought once, then twice. They bought a third time, with the last purchase being a record volume. If these buyers locked in profits here, their rebuy target will be lower. They see this pressure, little market activity besides them, so they lower their interest range. Consequently, there won't be as strong support as before. If buyers didn't take profits, they'll have less funds for rebuying in this range. This won't happen again. Levels short. Good for shorts. Use tight stops, small profits. They might buy out the flash crash again. Moving on. Levels lower here, no clear pressure. See the chart, double top, mirror level, retest. This level's a range. You can spot two. Mirror level, retest. Clearly a downtrend. Shorting now is on trend, not a mistake. Support's close, so shorting now is risky. Check smaller time frames for entry points. Here's the level we're approaching, likely to reach soon. Might rebound, but uh, we'll assess that when we get there. From this level, it's safe to go short on a breakout. The chart looks bearish. Let's continue. Here's a major support level that could act as resistance, but it's been tested before. The comments are similar to those on the cheaper levels. The entry point here will be higher than breaking this level. There's a local level that can be extended even higher. I eyeballed it on the daily chart. You can set it on the hourly chart, where we had support and a buyback. This is the minimum, and price will likely move once it clears this zone. I've switched to the hourly chart. Consider shorting on a breakout, even at this level. It'll likely end somewhere below this zone. Shiba also looks bearish with a downward trend. Shorting wouldn't be a mistake here. There's some buying, so a rebound is possible. Risky, but not wrong. Next, let's look at GST. In the last review, I gave a long on the small time frame. It shot up in five minutes. Congrats to those who profited from this. I'm glad to see you sending screenshots of your gains. Feel free to comment on YouTube too. It's less active than other platforms. You can say thanks here as well. On the daily chart, it looks bearish overall. Given the context I've described, price could fall from this global level. As you can see, it's just falling, falling, falling. There's a rounding here, a bottom and a buyer. That's clear, but this level might not hold. The buyer who's been building a position here could technically exit and move their interest zone lower, like here, for example. Say, from a breakout, it could be about 25% lower, while the current zone might be 30 to 35% lower at least. I'm not saying it'll crash, but there's an idea for a short trade here. Let's move on. There's no strong. Walang malakas na antas pero may lokal na ibaba dito at lokal na antas na sinusubukan nating abutin. Pwede kang mag-short mula dito pero sa mas maliit na time frames, hindi na pang araw-araw ang usapan dito. Dito pwedeng mag-short kapag na-break ang mga antas na ito. Kapag sinabi kong sa breakout, kailangan kong magbigay ng komento kasi maraming baguhan ang nanonood sa akin. Hindi ibig sabihin nito na mag-short ka agad. Ibig sabihin, kung mag-short ka ngayon at bumaba ang presyo dito, ang support 
level ay isang zone kung saan karaniwang binibili pabalik ang presyo. At ngayon binibili ito pabalik mula sa iyo, nag-close sa stop mo. Kaya kapag sinabi kong sa breakout, ibig sabihin hinihintay natin kung kailan at kung mahalaga. Kapag nangyari ito, hindi dapat mag-trade dahil walang breakout. Kapag may breakout at consolidation, importante maghintay ng hindi bababa sa tatlong candlesticks. At ito ay isang breakdown at pwede mong i-enter. Ang stop loss ay dapat sa bawat antas o pagkatapos ng isa. Mas mabuti kung isa lang tulad ng turo ko. Ito ang tinatawag na breakout. Huwag kalimutang maghintay ng consolidation. Sige, tuloy tayo. May dalawa pang barya na gumagawa ng pinakamaikling pattern sa merkado. Ay oo nga pala, hindi ko pa pala nasabi. Nagkomento lang ako tungkol sa Shiba. Sige, punta tayo sa mga pulang flag ko. May dalawang barya na gumagawa ng pinakamaikling pattern. Ito ay Pepe. Pansinin, may malaking pababang tatsulok dito. Dito mo makikita ang head and shoulders pattern. Nasa key level na to, matagal nang nakakonsolidate dito, sinubukan lumabas, agad na bili, bumalik agad sa level na to, parang mirror level. Dito ako naghahanap ng local trades. Tingnan mo, may breakout dito, breakout. Kahit ang lokal na puwersa sa chart ay tunay na malakas. Ito'y pattern ng ilalim, antas, breakout. Uh, magandang trade ito sa breakout. Hindi ko tinitrade si Pepe ngayon. Ginagamit ko lang siya bilang halimbawa ng malakas na bariya. Tulad ng dati kong tinitrade sa ganitong breakout at pattern. Tingnan mo, hindi nakapagpigil. Di gumana ang mirror level. Pagpasok doon, bumaba agad presyo. Nagsimulang magbenta. Ibig sabihin, mahina ang bariya. Sa mas mataas na time frame, makikita kung paano gumana ang resistance level. Tanong na lang, nasaan ang support? at anong level. Di ko makita ang breakout na papasok dito. Ngayon, medyo delikado dahil mataas ang risk. Pero pwedeng ishort to ngayon mismo, stop loss sa pinakamalapit na level. Sa ideal, tingnan natin ito sa bawat antas. Pero alam nating malaki ang pagbabago-bago dito. Kahit ang pinakamalapit na antas ay 10% stop. Kaya pwede mong subukan ngayon sa maliit na bahagi ng iyong pondo, halimbawa sa pangalawa o pangatlong leverage. Kailangan ng hiwalay na margin. Stop dito. Pero pwedeng matalo ito ng mahinahon. Tandaan, kapag tumaya ka sa pinakamalapit na antas, madalas itong matalo. At ang maganda dito, walang antas sa breakout na papasukan. At you can set up something here with a stretch, right? Yeah, with a stretch. You'll have to see for yourself. One of the strongest short setups in the market is Pepe. And the second strongest short setup is Sana. I took a short on it. Here's the breakdown. It was a false breakout. I waited without fixing. When trading without waiting for consolidation, you might get a false breakout or fake out as it's called. The price can spike, stopping you out. Now it's approaching that level again. It's a mega descending triangle, a clear, understandable level that's been tested several times already. The more we near the level and test it with consolidation, the higher the chance of a true breakout. There are clear death crosses here now. Remember when I discussed Bitcoin's death cross? A key reason not to short Bitcoin now is that the market's showing strength. In a bullish flat pattern, death crosses don't work. But if we see a trend change or downward setups, they're highly effective. Solana is one of those coins where the strongest short setups are forming and squeezing. Actually, it's not squeezing that much. Watch closely in the next day or two. If we see this pattern, it's a clear signal to consider opening short positions, maybe even a bit early. But remember, opening positions early before a breakout is risky. I didn't open early here, I entered on the breakout without securing the position. You could say I rushed, which might lead to getting knocked out. Remember, it can knock you out, but the profit here, like for Pepper, is quite high. In a breakout, the nearest target is minus 20%. It's super conservative trading, there might be some level of interest here. The weakest first interest may appear here, not worth taking profit yet. The level is very weak. As you can see, we've touched it a couple of times. If we break this concrete zone, nobody will really buy from here. The only exception, if there's a buyer here, yes, there might be one. But for a true breakout, this thing comes down to here. Where to take profits depends on your risk management strategy. These are the coins you can short. Now on to the next point. It's clear that if Bitcoin doesn't drop to the lower boundary but shoots up from here, all coins will grow. No need to consider short scenarios. For this reason, only enter during a breakout. 
There's a chance that even if Bitcoin surges now, some coins might not follow, but don't expect major divergences. Other coins will likely grow just a bit slower than Bitcoin. This graph shows alts are weak. Don't expect an alt season anytime soon. It simply won't happen. If Bitcoin keeps pressing its support, not just the lower edge but around here, alts will crumble and test their levels. Actually, you can look at any coins. If Bitcoin pushes towards support, all these altcoins will likely crumble. They'll either test their bottom or more likely update their lows across the board. With a few exceptions I'll mention, I'm not commenting on the entire altcoin market. You can look for other setups that might work for your own trades. I've only shown what's likely to happen soon. Coins will quickly approach their levels and drop below them. Exclude. Coins. I've picked two coins that are strong right now. It's GO, look, just bullish engulfing candles. This is the coin I gave you for trades at the breakout level in the last review. Many people sent me screenshots of their profits, hundreds and thousands of dollars. I'm glad you took it and made money. Well done. Of course, you shouldn't short this. If the market dips, it'll likely bounce back. But shorting strong coins is pointless. It's a mistake. That would be a mistake. There's also the CKB coin. It's super strong too, you shouldn't short it under any circumstances. These are probably the only two coins that are strong in the market right now. Now for the next comment. When assessing the market for shorts or longs, always look for strength or weakness. When considering potential shorts, look for market weakness. Is weakness present in the market or not? In reality, there is no significant weakness in the market currently. Right now there's just a squeeze to a level and even two coins bouncing from the bottom, so there's no real weakness, which is a point against taking a short position. When you have a checklist for your trading system, you mark pluses and minuses for shorting or waiting. If you do open a short, you consider the position size and leverage based on market weakness. Obviously, if everything is clearly going to zero, you would use more of your balance and higher leverage. Note that there is no particularly strong weakness in the market at the moment. There are even a couple of strong coins. The context I just discussed is most relevant if Bitcoin gets pushed down to key levels. There are some hints of that happening. I won't say it's a 100% probability, but there are hints of it. It's best to go there for 5 minutes or an hour and watch the trends. If the Bitcoin trend breaks, altcoins will fall and the coins I gave you could yield good short profits in the coming days. Draw a trend line and a couple of support levels for this trend. Ideally, there should be a trend breakout with a reversal accumulation distribution, then a breakout and retest of the mirror level or there could be a flash crash and consolidation. If we see the next level, it will confirm it's time to open shorts. Well, that's the situation and scenario. Everyone trades according to their own strategy independently, you know? I'm not Nostradamus to predict where the price will go. I'm commenting on possible scenarios here. The market can always go up or down. I'm just explaining how to trade for maximum profit. That's essentially what a trader does. Subscribe and check out our other social media for more content. I also share quick tips in my stories. I posted a YouTube review late discussing long ideas, dot profits and omis going long. But on Instagram I shared a story right before the pump. That's probably why people send me profit screenshots and thanks there. Another reason to follow our other channels, more content there. Don't forget to claim your sign-up bonuses. Good luck and...